Hi guys, this is Brandon again with Red State No 08, the Tennessee Outdoor Forum. You can visit us at www.tnoutdoorforum.com. Come to you today to talk about what makes a good bushcraft axe. After watching a lot of things uh, on YouTube and reading a bunch of forums, I've decided that there are a lot of guys that are just plain out and out axe knobs. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys that basically say if you don't have anything but a Gransford Brooks or a Wetterling's Axe that pretty much whatever you've got is trash. And I wanted to come to you because I found an axe that is a very affordable, very economical axe that I honestly feel like is an excellent option for bushcraft uh, given the benefits that I can weigh out to you with that tonight. And that's some of the things I want to go over. This is a three-quarter length east wing axe. Now, some of you guys who have done construction may recognize East Wing uh, from the hammers that they produce. They produce a full line of hammers, hand tools, great tools. Uh, East Wing hammers, long been used by framing uh, framers to build houses, whatever. Uh, this particular axe I bought offline, and I've had it for a couple of years. And I got it out. I've been doing a little project in my backyard here working. And I got the axe out working with it the other day, and I thought, you know, this would be a really good chance to kind of show this axe off and show that you can get a great axe that doesn't have to cost $150, $200 bucks, uh, for a good axe, guys. Uh, when I give you the price point on this, as with most things that we review with you, I'm all about cheap, but I'm all about quality. Uh, you can get high-quality items that are low-priced, and I feel like this is one of them. The axe itself, you can see, is full tank constructed out of solid steel. Uh, I want to say it's a 1095 tool steel that's made out of. It will rust. It will stain. It is not stainless, unfortunately. Uh, the axe itself, uh, the first thing that kind of caught my eye and really surprised me about the blade and about the axe itself is that the axe is super lightweight. I mean, just uber light very fast to swing now normally I wouldn't carry a full size axe with me backpacking however this axe I would carry with me uh, on a backpacking trip given that this axe only weighs a little over two pounds uh, very light axe very well built uh, with the full tank construction you know that you have that certain indestructibility factor uh, given that and that we know that the construction you have your tang going all the way down into the handle. We know that even if this fiberglass part breaks off, we can take our paracord out of our pack that we always carry, the 550 cord. We can wrap the steel that's in that, and we can still have a handle and still have a tool that we can use with that uh, without having to go out and pull a handle and carve a handle, uh, which trumps the argument that a lot of guys put out that when you have an axe like a Granford Brooks or you have a Wetterling's axe in your bag, if you break the handle in it while you're working in the woods, you can go chop down a tree with your knife and carve out a handle and put it in your axe. Guys, I, I like to call that over-emphasized romanticism uh, about the axe. Honestly, guys, if an uh, axe in the woods breaks a handle and I have a wooden axe, I'm going to use the head. I'm going to keep the head for whatever I can use it for, guys. But the last thing on my mind is going to be making a handle to go in my axe when I'm in a survival situation or a have-to situation. Uh, my survival motto is I'm going to be doing whatever I can to get the crap out of that situation and uh, to get back into civilization. Uh, this particular axe, like I said, we found it online. I want to say the price point on the particular axe was somewhere around $25. Now, I've seen other axes, not to be confused, I've, I've used the Gerber axes that are out there. And for the most part, guys, those axes are trash. Uh, some of you guys may like them. Uh, some of you all may have them. You say, well, you know, they're made good and it's always worked good for me. If it works great for you guys, that's great. But in my experience, every one of them that I've dealt with has been just a piece of junk. Uh, they're made cheaply. They're made out of cheap products. Your handles are made out of very cheap FRN. I'm not against FRN at all. I have a lot of knives that have FRN handles. And I have no problem with FRN. Uh, but these axes, the whole handle being made out of the FRN, the poly FRN material, uh, they're just weak. They just don't hold up. If that handle busts, there is no replacing that handle whatsoever. If this one busts, I still have a workable tool 
that I'm able to work with with just a little bit of paracord wrap. Another thing I really like about this axe, man, is the handle. Check out that handle, the rubber cushion and the impact cushion you have on the handle. Guys, I can cut a lot longer with this axe than I can some of the others that I have. And I have several different ones, but I can cut a lot longer with this axe given the fact that it doesn't it doesn't shock your hands. Uh, there's, a, there's just a great factor and a great maneuverability issue with that when you're not feeling as much absorption given the fact that the axe has a channel to make the absorption. That's part of what this fiberglass wrapping that is on the, the metal of the axe is. The fiberglass wrapping that's there on the axe serves as kind of a protection uh, for the tang of the axe. It also serves as sort of an impact resistance and sort of a shock absorption system for it, uh, which in my opinion, guys, is great. It doesn't get in the way. It adds a minimal amount of weight to the axe. Not enough that you would ever realize it. Axe comes with a nice leather cover, um, which I have an axe loop on my pack. This one also, though, is what I thought was cool, was it does have a belt slot in the back to where if you wanted to wear this axe on a belt, you could wear it on a belt. Uh, the axe sheaths are made and assembled in Haiti, if you can see that. Stitched. It's made out of a high grain. Looks to be... a uh, uh, anywhere from a, we're going to say a six to eight ounce leather that it's tooled out of. Got good big double snap closures. Got good rivets that are in it, the big double snap closure. Uh, we really like that. Guys, I would highly recommend the E-Swing Axe. You have a great pounding surface in the butt of the axe down here. As you can see, I have well used that to pound many different things with. Uh, not only that, guys, I've had to sharpen this axe a couple of times because, like I said, I don't leave this laying around. This is a tool that I use frequently. Um, I've had to sharpen it. Axe holds a great edge. I mean, you can get it razor shaving sharp uh, on that edge. Uh, just a great edge on the blade. Highly recommend the E-Swing Axe, guys. You can pick one up from Amazon.com. Uh, they also sell them on eBay. Sometimes you can get them for... Uh, I've seen them go around 20 bucks, even at times. Just depending on what you can pick up and what you can find if you shop around. Guys, if you have any other questions on that, I'm going to be posting up a series of videos tonight for TNOutdoorForum.com, Red State No Wait on YouTube. Please come by and check it out. Click, subscribe, like it, leave your comments. I'll do the best I can to get back with you. If you have any other questions or videos that you'd like to see, guys, please feel free. Shoot me a message. Shoot me a VR. I'll give you a VR. Uh, 